Welcome to Tent Talk, the podcast with Nancy McCrady, where we talk about life under the big tent of God's presence and the provoking process of discipleship. Here we go. Hey everybody, welcome to Tent Talk. This is Nancy McCrady. Do you understand the assignment? Here at Nancy McCrady Ministries, we do. We understand our assignment and we want to provoke you to understand your assignment. Take a listen today, and I pray that this will really encourage you to get some clarity and give some time to God to be able to speak to you about your assignment, your piece of work. It's also Giving Tuesday today, so please check out all things Nancy McCready at nancymccready.com. Be a liberal giver. We really, truly appreciate it. We love, love knowing that world-class givers have to first be world-class receivers. What have you received from Nancy McCready Ministries that makes you such a world-class giver in this hour of history? Love you all. Talk to you soon. Do you understand the assignment? Now, this is a slang term that's been way overused in social media. You may have seen many very funny reels and short videos where people definitely uh, use this term, she understood the assignment, they understood the assignment. And I just want to give you a little bit of background on this word assignment. Now before I do, I want you to understand that your calling is different than your assignment. You are called to him. Jesus said, come unto me. He called them to himself. When he spoke to Peter in John 21, he said, you follow me. So our calling is to him very deeply, intimately, personally. It's very progressive, the way that it continues to grow and flourish and expand and bring deep enlargement to us. He's increasing our capacity for him daily, moment by moment, situation by situation. And then you have giftings. And those have been given to you uh, to help build the church, to help accomplish uh, the assignment that you have been given. Your giftings are not necessarily for you. They are a part of what blesses others. So again, don't let the noise and all distract you, okay, as I'm here at the Amsterdam airport. But I wanted to focus in, because I speak about calling to Him and your oneness with Him so much of the time, but I want to speak today um, in real time about assignment. So let me just give you some definitions of this word assignment. I want you to be thinking about your assignment. I'm definitely thinking about my assignment. It's Giving Tuesday. We're stepping into our end of your giving campaign. And of course, I'm thinking about the assignment, how to communicate that to others. But I live in calling and gifting and assignment. And I want to provoke you as we step into this last month of 2021. I want you, because I know it's a season of time where people are already going to be thinking and assessing as they get ready to step into the new year. But I want to help frame that in a way that you are really listening to Him. Remember, respond to Him. You're calling to Him. It's the only place that your gifting and assignments will make sense. And that we need to lean our ear into Him. We need to incline our ear to Him to listen for specifics. If you didn't listen to the podcast yesterday on the anticipation of the unknown, I encourage you to go back and listen to that um, and to... Uh, let it help to frame even some of what I'm sharing with you today. So this is a time, I think it's very timely, not because of the human calendar, not because of man's calendar, but because of what God is doing in this moment. What God is doing to get us laser focused on hearing Him and His voice. That we stay moving with Him not being cookie cutter, not following somebody else's plan. He calls you to himself more and more because you're getting more specific in your life, in your assignment. 
that's why bringing sharpness and and um, a more uh, clarity to your giftings is a part of helping the skill set that carries all of that out. But let me just get to these definitions. So generally speaking, the word assignment means a task or piece of work. Now when I wrote this down, this made me laugh because we are all a piece of work, okay? <laughs> Okay, an assignment is a task or piece of work allocated to someone as part of a job or course of study. Again, it's a piece of work given to someone. It is someone who is on assignment is doing a particular job, usually in a particular place where they have been sent for a specific period of time. It can be a particular job or responsibility given to you. Now, this slang term that I referred to uh, is a popular way uh, when it says he understood the assignment. <laughs> she obviously understood the assignment. It's a, it's a popular way of praising someone who is going above and beyond to do a good job. It can mean uh, a familiar term we would use is they're giving it, you know, 110%. They're going above and beyond that which is just normally expected. They understood the assignment, they accomplished the assignment, they stayed with it, they, they brought forth, if you will, a product at the end uh, of their time uh, in that particular place and in that particular focus. So I really want to encourage you as you're responding to him and his calling for you to come closer to him. As you may become more aware of your giftings, which can really help explain why you see things in a particular way. So I oftentimes joke, you know, I could walk into a restaurant and I'm like, I could really help y'all, you know, with a few things here. But of course, nobody's asking, right? Because I just, I just almost automatically see things in a certain way where I'm like, wow, if they could just do it this way, this would be so awesome, or why aren't they doing this? You know, I just, how can you not see this? So when I do see it, which I see it all the time when I'm in Poland, I see it all the time when I go into restaurants and the way that they handle things in their churches and, and, and all, it's, it's very um, sharp and done with an amazing attention to detail and yet it's carried out with such ease and it puts people at ease. If you walk into one of their cafes, if you walk in to um, a church event, let's say, that they've really been focused on, when they do uh, a worship event, um, the way they find their social media to get the message out it's done with a fair amount of ease because it just comes to them this is what they're doing and it communicates the presence of God it communicates God's care for the detail in people's lives are you aware of this that when you take time to care about the detail about the way you're making a way for people to encounter him and to connect with him it speaks something to people you may think, oh, this is ridiculous, taking time to do all these details. Why does it matter how you do this or that? It matters because it's, it's communicating to people that God takes time to care about the details of your life. God wants to set a table for you. God wants, when you walk into a place, for you to know he's already there and he's been waiting for you. Isn't this what it says in the scripture? that God is already waiting for you in the secret place. So you're not going to come in and there be nothing there that means something to you. Because one of the greatest ways that God expresses love to us is He knows what's meaningful to you. And I don't mean that in a subservient, uh, menial way, like that God caters to you and, you know, God's your bellboy. I'm just saying, God made you, He knows you, and He knows what opens you up within, and He loves you in a way that is so very meaningful. So, the way that you carry out your assignment, I believe, is very important. I believe the, the thoughts that you have, the strategy that God may give you, the way you conduct your business, 
the way you live and walk and behave is a reflection of him and how he has been loving you. He has been tending to you, nourishing you, nurturing you, taking care of you. It will have a great effect upon the way you then turn around and live out love, live out your assignment, and the way that you take care of details, the way you stay with things. This is what it tells us in Romans 6, that because we shared in his death and everything of the old and self and flesh went down, and therefore we can then share in his life. And this means then that we behave and walk and conduct our business in newness of life, in new life. There is great creativity and freshness in his life. And if we live in that way, by letting him love us, by letting him teach us, by he will bring your attention to certain things and cause you to pay attention to detail. So again, that happens because you're responding to him and you're calling. It's going to begin to bring understanding to you about your giftings, but that then pours into how you and he together in that abiding oneness carry out your assignment. And assignments can change. Your calling to him does not change. Giftings, the, the word says this without repentance, they're not going to be called back in. They can be deepened, sharpened, you know, fine-tuned. They can find expansion, expression, all of that. But assignments, my friends, can change. I had a fabulous assignment for 20 years as the executive pastor uh, at Christian City Fellowship in Seeley, Texas. And uh, no one was more shocked than I that that would be my assignment. Uh, that's not something I sought out, uh, particularly. It was a door that opened, an offer that was given. And for 20 years, that was my assignment. And it grew me and stretched me um, in a myriad of ways um, and prepared me for the assignment that I'm in right now. So what, what is happening in your life right now I would venture to say may not be your the end goal. It may not be the final assignment. And preparation, uh, where you've been, has been preparation for where you're going. God will also, as you lean into Him, help you to know how to do that transition from assignment to assignment. Uh, do you understand your assignment? Do you? Would someone be able to say, whether in a slang form of praise to you, is that they understood the assignment? Um, because this, I think, is is, a, is something that we, we need to truly uh, think about and give, give thought to. Uh, you don't have to produce your assignment, but you do discover it. After my 20 years uh, of that um, privilege of serving Christian City Fellowship as their executive pastor. Uh, God had given me a heads up a few years prior. I didn't know exactly how all that would look. But he had he began to prepare me at least seven years prior. So I'm not talking about just some quick, spontaneous, you know, boom, I just get tired of one thing and I shift to another. I'm talking about life assignments, my friends, things that were written down before time that God has a way and a timing. There are deep muscles within your spirit that, that need to be developed, things that need to be fine-tuned and calibrated to Him. And so you may be in preparation right now and think, I don't understand why this is necessary, but trust me, later you will. You'll be like, thank God <laughs> that that uh, part of the you know preparation was accomplished. Uh, for me, I know that just the sheer work ethic and stamina of 20 years uh, built something very, very deep in me of the Spirit. Uh, I am not naturally going to be faithful, uh, disciplined, all these kinds of things. But the calling, the gifting, and the assignment, as they are in proper order, uh, can bring some really deep development uh, to you. 
uh, that you don't have naturally. And don't let that be a problem, because you are always meant to receive everything supernaturally from God. And so God gave much time and thought into how that transition would happen. And then at three-year marker, I got some more clarity. And then I was able to give eight, about roughly about 18 months notice and be able to say, this is how I would suggest that we make this transition. And I was um, really privileged to um, have that kind of time. I mean, somebody could have just said, hey, you, you think you're out of here? Well, give your two weeks and be done. But that is not what happened. And I was very grateful for that time to really get really, really focused on leaving there well and stepping into the next assignment well and was able to prepare both places, to prepare where I had been and then begin to prepare where I was going because uh, to be able to do that uh, in an open and uh, um, you know, integrous way was, was a gift and I was very grateful for that. So I want to encourage you to understand that God may show you things that are going to happen in a year or six months or two years, however the timing may be. Now you need to own every bit of that to be faithful to the post and the assignment that you're in right now as you prepare for the next assignment. Don't be shabby. Don't, don't be sloppy. Don't be uh, you know, uh, cavalier and, and have an arrogant disregard for where you're at. Uh, honor it and all the opportunities that have come to you there to serve God, to serve people, to be a part of something that was bigger than yourself. And then honor where you're going by being humble uh, and knowing that you don't know everything. No matter how experienced I was for 20 years as an executive pastor, uh, the learning curve, my friends, <laughs> continues on in the new assignment. And you, you are glad for all of that experience, but you are humbled in the learning curve of where you're going. So again, I wanted to encourage you today, and I want to say that I believe that at NMM and those that are associated with us, we understand the assignment. We know that it can change and shift. We know that um, all of the assignment details, timings, all of that, content and the context of them, uh, all come from calling. And I want to help you to understand your assignment. I want you to know that there is something that God has written down over you. Uh, and it is not about our fame and fortune. It's not only important if it looks successful to others or has a platform or uh, looks large and all of that. Our greatness, my friends, is increased as we live surrounded by His goodness and we begin to realize more and more whatever the measure is that He has put upon us, whatever our portion, whatever our assignment, hidden or seen or both, no matter how we move in and out of assignments and the people that we're with and the places that we go and favor that has been put upon us that we never forget the reason that we had the favor to go in was to make him known, was to accomplish something in his people, in business, in the arts, in education, in science, in media, what, whatever mountain you may be called it to, lean into him and understand he's going to sharpen your giftings. He is going to awaken you to assignment and to the ways to move in and out of that and let him make you the person that he's made you to be so that when you get in where you're going, you do not get distracted by who you're with, where you're at, what you're doing, and forget why you were sent in there. Favor, my friends, is to get you places you could never go on your own, but it's always for the purpose of accomplishing His will. So, be encouraged at this time um, to uh, let Him focus you in uh, on your calling, your gifting, and really let it begin to propel you into assignment, because there is a time that though you know you are the will of God, now let's get on with doing the will of God so that others can know Him 
and uh, what his heart's desire is can actually be seen, known, accomplished, and carried out by sons who are full of his integrity, his faithfulness, his stability, and we will accomplish and understand our assignment. So, glad that you were with me today and that you're listening uh, with me in real time. I'll be, by the time this gets posted probably, getting very close to boarding my plane here in Amsterdam. It is Giving Tuesday, November 30th. Give liberally uh, and obediently as God leads to Nancy McCready Ministries. You'll see it all over our social media today. Giving Tuesday is an international global giving day, and I will not shy away from saying give as we all walk in our assignment, and we are then stronger together. And uh, I hope that you will give today. I hope that throughout our end of your giving campaign, all throughout the month of December, you will continue to give. You will encourage others uh, to check us out and to give for their end of year tax free giving. People are looking for places to do that and people to give into uh, before the end of the year. And then I definitely, definitely want to see an increase in our monthly partnerships so that in 2022, no matter if you give. Uh, in this time right now as an end of year giving, I would also like to encourage you to add to that um, that you would make it your goal to be one of our financial partners in 2022 uh, giving each month and we can give you information about all of that. So thanks for being with me today here on Tent Talk. Thanks for giving. Thanks for listening. Thanks for making all of this possible because here at Nancy McCray Ministries we understand the assignment. We love you all. And you, my friends, are truly a piece of work because you are definitely part of my assignment. And what an honor and privilege for me. Love you all. Go deeper with him. And if possible, connect more with him. Talk to you soon. For more information on Nancy, please visit nancymccrady.com or follow her on social media at nbmccrady.